All right, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick and we are once again back for, I'm kind of like itching to get into this, uh, we are again, once again back for another Pokemon collecting video. So in this specific video, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the cooler Japanese cards uh, that I have most recently picked up, but as well, if you guys are into opening stuff, I do have this Pokemon Rumble box to open. And yeah, hope you guys are going to enjoy the video and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background information as much as I possibly can uh, about the cards that I'm about to show you. So yeah, enjoy. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a combination of cards, both new and old, just to kind of keep things vintage and fresh at the same time. So these first two set of cards are identical, except for the fact that one's in Japanese and one's in English. Uh, this is the birthday Pikachu card, and it's given that name for very obvious reasons. There's literally uh, Pikachu sitting beside a birthday cake. And as you can see on the top left hand corner right here, uh, this is like a little blank spot where you're supposed to fill in the person's name, then you give them the card. Um, don't do that if you ever find one of these cards because it would seriously uh, devalue it a lot. As you can see, the Hall of Oil patterns in the background are just so pretty. Um, it is a Black Star promo, so all the promo cards in the early stages of Pokemon uh, were all black. They were labeled Black Star promo because they have this little Black Star right here on the bottom right hand corner of the image. And this is the Japanese version as you can tell right here. Uh, the artwork is almost identical but you can kind of see uh, some slight differences between the two. Uh, this one has like more pronounced hollow foil in the background and as well the text and the layout of the box at the bottom is a little bit different as well. You can see um, there are more like boxes and borders on this card. It's almost the exact same but there's just slight differences in the hollow foil and there's like as you can see right there there's actually a swirl in this one, a hollow foil swirl. Sticking with the theme of Pikachu, so this is a newer card. It came out two years ago. I like to call these cards cosplay Pikachu or pretend or disguise Pikachu. Uh, as you can see, this is a Pikachu <laughs> trying to dress up as Mario. This is like like two worlds colliding right here. It has a lot of incredible hollow foil in the background. This is what you call a full art card, which is something fairly new, which has come out in the last couple of years, it, which means that the entire card, the entire image, the picture is a full art thing takes up the entire region of the front of the card. They came in special boxes. Uh, the boxes are actually getting quite expensive now. And this is the Luigi one. They're just so cute and they're just so fun. These aren't the most expensive cards in the world, but um, part of collecting is not just collecting what you think is gonna be the most expensive or what has the most value. It's just collecting what you like. And this one, I just, I saw these cards and it, it just brought a smile to my face of how cool, how cute they look. Nintendo's two biggest franchises merged together on one card, so uh, it's something that I like a lot. 90% of the time, uh, if there's an English card and the identical Japanese card, the English card is usually worth a bit more because it just reaches a, water, a wider audience. More people speak English than Japanese, so they're a little bit more desirable, but there are exceptions. So to give you an example, so these next couple of cards that I'm about to show you guys uh, they were released in English uh, during the Call of Legends uh, set, which came out in, I think in 2009 and 2010. But there are a Japanese variant of them, and these were actually released as lottery cards. So uh, what the lottery cards were is that when you bought packs of blister packs in Japan, a certain amount of them, you could mail the proof of purchase into the Pokemon company and they would put your entry in for a raffle or a lottery of specific cards. And there were only so many of each set released. All right, so the first set of lottery cards I'm gonna show you guys is the Deoxys and the Rayquaza set. So if you won the lottery, you were awarded both of these cards at the same time. So this one comprises of the Rayquaza as well as the Deoxys. As you can see, they are different colored because they are the shiny variants. Shiny variants of the Pokemon. So uh, pretty much across the hobby, if the Pokemon is shiny on the card, it gives the card a little bit more inherently, a little bit more value. So they're worth a bit more. But once again, these were released as set cards in uh, the trading card game as well during Call of Legends. Uh, but yeah, they look really cool. The, once again, they're a holofoil. Um, they have a holofoil in the background. 
it'll look real cool right here with the Deoxys as well. All right, so next we had the Legendary Dog Trio. So if you guys play the Pokemon Gold and Silver or Crystal versions of the game, you guys will know how much of a bitch these guys were to catch because uh, when you encounter them, they would immediately run away from you. So it was actually the very first time that it was actually difficult to capture a Pokemon. The most expensive one is definitely uh, the Suicune, just because the art on this card is just so fantastic. That's why people love it a lot. Um, the the Entei as well as the Raikou aren't nearly as done well, in my opinion, in terms of the art. Don't get me wrong, they still, they still look really cool. They still have that shiny variant to them. In terms of just pure art design, as well as Suicune being an absolute tank inside the game, with its mirror coat ability. Um, this one is definitely the most valuable of the three just because people want it more. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys in terms of showing you guys stuff in my collection. Uh, let's move on to the breaking of sealed product because that's always fun. So uh, just like the Pokemon Southern Islands binder that I showed you guys in the previous episode, uh, this set once again has a set list of cards. So there's no surprises you get exactly the same thing in every single box and this is called pokemon rumble the tcg or trading card game uh, this box was released in 2009 the boxes were about 20 bucks when they first came out um, prices have pretty much exploded they're at least five times that now you can find these for 100 to 130 bucks on eBay. I think they're just cool. They had like that bobblehead feel to it. And so it's kind of cute at the same time. So uh, you're guaranteed three holofoil cards. You have the Mewtwo, the Pikachu, as well as the Venusaur, uh, some of the more popular species in the game and a bunch of others as well. So uh, enough talking, uh, let's get into it. Let's remove the holofoil, not the holofoil, uh, the saran wrap, and let's break this open. Breaking seal product is always fun, especially old seal product because um, the price of seal product never goes down. It will always go up because the, you know, anytime you open something, you decrease the inventory in the entire world of how many of seals are out there. And then uh, there's the back. As you can see, it was designed for a specific game uh, that you play with your friends. Uh, the main problem with this box is, I don't know if you guys can see right here, getting cards out of these kind of blisters where the cards like pressed into there and without damaging it is extremely difficult. And we can see what we got here. So we have some playing boards. Reminds me of like opening a brand new board game. You have a bunch of these card things that you pop out. Uh, okay, general rules of how you play the game. Oh, this was also released as a DS game as well. So, and as you can see right here, this is the pack that came in the Rumble Box. And these cards are definitely, it's kind of cringe where they, they are like curved and bent. This is like, this is straight out of a box. Like I didn't do this myself, so. And you have the playing mat right here. As you can see, there is a playing mat. Oh, this one's actually not that bad because they weren't too tight in there. Ugh. So we got some dice. <laughs> All right, so I have everything penny sleeved as well as put into a semi-rigid card saver. Uh, once again, this is stuff that you need to do if you want to submit the cards for uh, professional grading to PSA or BGS. And I got a chance to inspect a couple of the cards and pretty much as you expect, it's gonna be all kind of mostly nines and I'm hoping, cause there's never a guarantee that there'll be some tens scattered uh, along the way. Um, unfortunately, this first card right here, which is a uh, Venusaur, this is one of the three holographic cards uh, that you saw at the front. I do not think it will get a 10. There will be no way for me to show you guys this. Um, actually, maybe. Let's see if I can get this to focus without, there, maybe I can get it. Um, even that slight whitening will prevent it from getting a 10. In most cases, P PSA's quality control it's kind of up and down these days. So even though I don't think it will get a 10, I'm still 
keep my fingers crossed, submit it and see what happens because I'm definitely not going to open another case. Um, I'm just opening this case just for the fun of opening sealed product. I rearranged the cards in their numeric order. Uh, so there are 16 cards in this set. Uh, so this one we have a Cherim uh, right there. So with these cards, the non half foil cards, the, the text that says Pokemon Rumble is actually still hollow foil. It has like, kind of reminds me of like the reverse hollow foil cards. So. Uh, we got a uh, Cherim. Next up, we have a Nine Tails, which I'm pretty sure we'll get a PSA 9, just because there are, is a bit of whitening on the corners on the back. But then we have a uh, Heatran right there. Then we got a Mr. Starmie. Starmie was so overpowered in the earlier ages of Pokemon with its recoverability, can learn Surf or Hydro Pump. Thunderbolt, Psychic, it was an absolute special sweeper. Uh, really good Pokemon plus recover, it was awesome. Then we got a Gyarados. Nightmares of playing Pokemon Go and catching all those Magikarp to get a Gyarados. Worst thing ever. <laughs> then we got the Pikachu. And I actually think that this Pikachu, this is one of the Hall of Foils, uh, actually has a chance at a 10. So I'm really happy that I got at least one of the cards, uh, possibly in a 10. Uh, then we have a Zapdos. This one's kind of reminds me kind of like a little chickadee bird. <laughs> it, looks, it looks really cool and cute. Uh, this one probably will be a nine as well. Uh, this is the Mewtwo. Uh, this Mewtwo is, it's hard to say, has a chance, but I actually have already purchased this card in a PSA 10 already. So even if it doesn't get the 10 grade, I have one in the back of my hand. Uh, then we have the counterpart, which is a Mew. And this Mew actually looks pretty good. This has a chance at a 10, I think. Um, I, love, I love the art on this one, it looks so cool. Then we have Mr. Diglett. Diggle D, Diggle D, Diggle D. Trio, 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 Diglett. Then we got one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, which is a Lucario. And this one actually has a chance at a 10 as well. So I'm excited for this one. Then this one probably will get a nine. I'm looking at the back of it right now. Uh, there's a pretty significant dent in one of the corners, like some whitening uh, on the cut corner. So this might get it, the skunk, skunk tank, skunk tank might get a nine. Uh, I don't know the pronunciation of a lot of the new Pokemon that well. Then we got Mr. Um, Bastildon with his lower jaw underbite going on right there. This one actually looks pretty good. Uh, this one might have a 10 possibility. And then we got everyone's favorite but not uh, favorite Rattata. And then finishing off with number 16, we have Mr. I can get this to focus. Mr. Badoof right there. Just straight up chilling. So yeah, uh, these are definitely all gonna go to PSA for PSA grading. Uh, whenever my Southern Islands uh, returns come in, I will definitely give you guys an update of the returns because there's actually some very valuable cards in the Southern Island set that are worth a lot of money if they get a 10. So and yeah, did a lot of this video. We did some collection. We did open some product. You really can't, you can't ask for more in the Pokemon hobby. That's pretty much, this is the Pokemon hobby right there. We got sealed product and then we got graded cards and yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed the look into my Pokemon collecting hobby. If you guys want to see more, uh, let me know in the comment box below. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability and I will see you guys next time, all right? Have fun. Good luck out there if you're collecting and have a fantastic day as always.